Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. Usually when we're thinking of Linux as a desktop operating system, we're usually thinking of it in terms of a personal use and not in terms of business. When we think of Linux in business, we're probably thinking more of the server side of things. However, there are many people who use their operating systems for business every single day and Linux is no exception. And so today what I'm going to do is go over some software that you can use or a setup that you can use to run your business for free without having to buy any software. Now this is taking to account that this business is probably going to be more of a small business. You know, more than likely it's going to be less than 50 people or even maybe less than 100 as well. However, you can scale this uh, as large as you'd like. And the reason why I say this is for smaller businesses is because a lot of times a smaller business is on a budget. Okay, and so this is catered more towards those people. Now, I will say that a lot of people who do use business software, they are using the Windows operating system. So I'm primarily going to focus on that. And also, this can be something that you can use as an alternative. So that doesn't mean that your whole business has to be either Windows or Linux. So you might have some older machines or some additional machines that you don't want to put uh, additional software on, meaning you have to go buy it. You know, you want to have an, another option. So uh, the areas that I'm going to focus on is these areas right here. So uh, for businesses, these, in my opinion, are typically the things that every computer will need. So first and foremost is an operating system, which is definitely something that every computer needs. Secondly is office related programs. Third, video editing. Fourth, graphics. And fifth, publishing. Sixth, screen recording. Seven, some type of video call collaboration. And finally, antivirus. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go over the options available in Windows, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is go over to the options that you have in Linux. Now the first option is your operating system. Now you can buy the home version, which starts at 120, or you can buy the pro version, which goes up to $200, okay? But I really think for a lot of small businesses, they're usually gonna get the home version, okay? So the second thing is they need some type of office application. Okay, now once again, there is a home version and there's also a business version. And now how Microsoft has it, you know, you can't purchase Office and then just one time and then just not have to pay anymore. Now it's uh, on a license uh, per year uh, basis. So it's about $100 per year and that's per machine. But it looks like here you could have up to five users. So let's just say uh, for five machines, okay? And then also, you're going to need some type of multimedia software, okay? And obviously, the one that everybody thinks about is Adobe. And Adobe has a lot of different software available. So the ones that I'm thinking of is Photoshop for your graphics, Photoshop and Illustrator. And then for your publishing, it's Adobe InDesign. And then for your video editing, it's Adobe Premiere Pro. And so I think it's a lot cheaper if you just go ahead and get the whole package. But similar to what Microsoft does with Office. This is now on an annual plan and you can no longer just buy the product outright. And so this is the more cost effective option where you get all their software, okay? And then another thing is screen recording. And I know there are many options available in Windows, but the one that I usually hear and I usually see people use is Camtasia. And you can use free software recording options but this is the one that I'm aware of that's used by a lot of people who are in Windows and that's $200 per single user license. And then finally pretty much every single Windows machine is going to have some type of antivirus uh, solution and so let's just say that's about $40 for the first year and this is once again an annual uh, type service. Okay so looking at all that and this is for the windows and so these are the price breakdown that I had and I'm also going to include the free options the open source options which are also available in windows but the majority of people they are not going to use the free options when it comes to windows okay I think that's the majority of users 
And so here you see the operating system anywhere from 120 to 200. The office programs about 100 per year. Uh, now, if as I mentioned, you should just go ahead and get the Adobe Creative Cloud. So that's about 600 a year. But you get all this software. So video editing, there's your Adobe Premiere, your graphics, your Photoshop, Illustrator, publishing, Adobe InDesign. And like I said, there are free open source options available, okay? And then here's your screen recording, $200 for Camtasia. Your video call and collaboration, I just put Skype and Slack, and those are free. And antivirus is about $40 uh, per year. Now, so the estimated cost per machine is about $1,000, okay, um, if you were to purchase all the software. Now, if you didn't purchase all the software and you did use, say, like, uh, open source versions for your office applications and for your Adobe products, then the price comes down to about $360. But once again, that doesn't include any yearly license costs or updates, okay? Now, in the Linux world, let's look and see some options that you have for each one of these categories and see the cost, which is a uh, zero, okay? So let's go ahead and break this down. So the first thing is the operating system. Obviously, the one that I prefer is Linux Mint, but in a Linux world, you have so many options. And so uh, the choice is yours right there. But a lot of them are going to be Ubuntu based anyway. And like I said, my favorite is Linux Mint. Second, for your Office application, and it's already built in, is Libre Office. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier, this is also available on Microsoft Windows. Now, Libre Office, it does an amazing job. However, it's not 100% compatible formatting wise with uh, Microsoft Office. Okay, I just want to put that out there. So it's not 100%, but it's an excellent solution. I use it every single day. So your video editing, the two options that I use are OpenShot, which I feel is uh, really great for people who want to do quick video editing and for people who are new to video editing. And then for people who are more advanced, Intermeter to advance, I recommend using uh, Kden Live, which is the one that I use um, regularly. So Kden Live is the one that I use for all my video editing. Okay, so now we're gonna go into graphics, and the one that is included already, at least on Linux Mint, is GIMP, and uh, a lot of people use GIMP even on uh, Windows and Mac, so it's very very popular, and also. For vector graphics, you could use Inkscape instead of uh, Adobe Illustrator, okay? So, moving on, we go on to publishing, okay? Now, I know not everybody does publishing, but I do publishing. So, uh, whether you're doing like Kindle books, eBooks, or whether you're doing magazines, brochures, and stuff. So, I think a lot of businesses do use publishing tools, and the main one that's used in the Windows world is... Adobe InDesign so that's the primary one and in the Linux world you can use two tools the first one for actual book publishing like say you were a ebook Kindle publisher I highly recommend Calibre that is the one that I use and then if you're also doing publishing like brochures and so forth where it's more like uh, for business publishing you could also use a tool called Scribus, if I'm saying that's right, yeah, so Scribus is great for that. And like I said, this is a great tool, great tools combined to uh, use instead of Adobe InDesign, as you could see here. So you could do a lot of business related publishing right here. So there's the book publishing and then there's other forms of publishing, okay? So let's move on and we get into screen recording. Now, like in uh, Windows, you know, there are many options available for screen recording. My favorite is Simple Screen Recorder. Okay, now, Simple Screen Recorder, you can go to his website to download. And it's, uh, once again, you know, it's just free. But all you have to do is put the com follow the commands right here in the terminal. And then you will have Simple Screen Recorder right here available for you. And it's a wonderful tool. It's my actually my favorite screen recording tool. You could also use OBS as well. And I did want to mention that. Let me put that on there too. OBS 
is an awesome free option. So I'm going to put that on there too. So you don't have to buy Camtasia. So that could knock down the price even further. Okay, which is nice. So I'm going to put that on there. So I'm going to put OBS on here as well. So for OBS, you could go to their uh, website and get that. But the one that I use most of the time to do screen recording is simple screen recorder. Okay, now we come to video collaboration and uh, also, you know, if you're doing any type of conferencing, web conferencing, um, you can use Skype, which is available on Linux. And the one that I really enjoy using is Slack, you know, and Slack also has an add-on that you can use It's called a, for video conferencing, you, you can use the Appearian as well, okay? And then finally, is antivirus now in the Linux world you know antivirus for the desktops it's not something that's necessarily required you know whereas if you have a Windows machine um, you're gonna have to get some type of antivirus solution now obviously you can get something free uh, you could download a free options like ABG or Avira you know there are a lot of options out there but the majority of businesses they normally purchase an antivirus solution, you know, and so they'll get yearly updates and so forth. And so when you're looking at all this, you know, you have options available in Linux if you are running a business and your cost is free. Okay, and once again, I do want to mention that yearly costs, you do have annual costs with this as well. So even if you were to use all the open source options, which is great, it'll knock down your cost quite a bit for each machine, you're still going to have annual costs as well for uh, the software that requires uh, membership or licensing fees. And so as you can see there, Linux for business, there are some great tools and options available. And, you know, there's also tools that are cross-platform that you can use on both operating systems. And so if you are a Windows shop, you know, and then you are thinking of either adding other machines or using older machines for business, Linux is a great option, okay? And since a lot of the software, I think a lot of the main software is available on both operating system, it might be an easy transition for you, okay? now. The one software that I forgot to mention before I close this off is your email manager. You know, a lot of times people will use Microsoft Outlook, but you can use Thunderbird to do that. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, mention that as well. So you don't have to use Outlook for that. But going back to it, if you did want to use Linux for business, you know, you do have options available. It is free and you don't have to worry about any of the annual uh, fees that you would have to pay when you are on a Windows machine. So that's it for this particular episode. If you had any thoughts on using Linux for business, you know, be sure to leave it in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you wanted to support my channel further, you could do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.